player and trans Mogwai here and I got another Legends of Rune Terra video for you guys today and today we are all about violence. That's it. That's the intro. Violence. That's what this deck is all about, ladies and gentlemen. We're combining Village Water and Froyord for some good old plunder with Gangplank and Sejuani. It's not the first time that you've seen this champion combination, but it has been a minute. Since I've showcased a deck like this in the channel, and since anybody has played anything like that, and I just heard like a something like fell. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully nobody died. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna finish this intro and I check what what happened there. Regardless, uh, this is a mid range deck that I've been working on for the past few days, and I wanted to bring into the channel. I wanted to take an approach at a a version of uh, Sejuani game playing plunder that focused on ramping. And by that, I mean a version that plays both Dreadway and Tusk Raider. Dreadway got buffed in, I don't know if it was the recent balance patch or the one before that, but it got buffed recently, right? It went from a 9 drop to an 8 drop because of the concurrent timelines combo, and it made the card significantly better. Actually playable, and it's a very, very fun card to mess around. I already showcased it with Piltover and Funsmith, and I wanted to bring it in this archetype as well. I think Wolf Rider is a very underrated 4-drop in the game. She doesn't really get much love, despite the fact that as a unit, she's just fantastic. He's a 4-3 with Overwhelm that allows you to ramp, and that's a very big deal if you have a deck with uh, power 6-drops like Sejuani. Playing Wolf Rider and then being able to play Sejuani on turn 5 is really, really strong, and I really wanted to make a good deck that can capitalize on this. So there is a few things that may ca catch you off guard, like the one-off of Shakedown and Ice Shard. I'll explain that very shortly, but first of all, let me explain what the early curve is about and uh, what the deck is trying to do. So, because of Gangplank and Sejuani's basically identical level up requirement, you need to damage the enemy Nexus in five different rounds. We have a deck that is aiming to always have a one drop available, at the very least one, to be able to push damage and work for this level up from the get go, as we are also playing a full set of the Monkey Idol. Monkey Idol is one of the best enablers for game playing against Sejuani, as if you, because it has five health, when you play it, every round you'll be spawning a Powder Monkey, which means that if it does not get answered, Monkey Idol will contribute to 60% of the level up requirement for Gangplank and Sejuani. So that's a big deal. Naturally, that's hoping things go well. There's a lot of matchups which can handle with this. There's some decks with Calling Strike. There are decks with Challengers as well. So you got to keep that in mind. You have to try to find the right moment for Monkey Idol depending on what you're facing. But if it doesn't get answered, then it's really, really neat in that regard as it can really help us get that level up, which is very important because the reason why I'm playing this deck right now is because I think Sejuani is potentially somewhat of a counter to Thresh Nasus because if we manage to level up Sejuani, I've had a solid win rate against Thresh Nasus with this deck because of my ability to level up Sejuani and then trigger her leveled up ability to basically frostbite the entire opposing board, which can be used to counter Atrocity amongst other things. So it's also really good against Demacia decks as well that revolve around, uh, you know, using strike spells, single combats, concerted strikes, etc. Sejuani can be incredibly powerful against that. Sejuani's ability is just amazing. Like she's also really good against elusive decks as well because once we level her up, we can just wait for them to attack and then frostbite their entire board. In order to do that though, we need cards like Warning Shot. And unfortunately there's only three copies of Warning Shot. And on top of that, Ya boy, what's, what was your name? The, the Yordle Grifter got nerfed a long time ago. He used to be able to always spawn a warning shot for you, which would have been amazing because we would have loved that in this deck. But now we need the Allegiance. And 14 Froyor cards is a bit too much to uh, hope uh, Yordle Grifter would provide us with warning shots or just any sort of value whatsoever on a regular basis. So we have to go with cards that kind of function like warning shot but uh, aren't warning shots. So I like to label them as bad warning shots. And we have two cards that do this. One of them is Shakedown. And the reason why Shakedown can function as a warning shot is because we're playing not only a full set of Monkey Idol, but a full set of Monkey Business. So we can make it so that we enable a plunder, right? We play Monkey Business, and it, this allows us to generate a powder, uh, powder, a powder monkey at the beginning of our next round you know, without us having to pass over initiative or, or gain initiative to do so, right? By having this monkey generated at the beginning of the round, we can then apply shakedown onto it, deal two damage to it to grant two enemies vulnerable, kill the monkey, and as you guys can see, trigger the last breath effect to deal one damage to the enemy nexus, which allows us to basically ping the opposing nexus at burst speed. 
like warning shot. That's what I mean by bad warning shot. It's like an alternative, you know, <laughs> it's what we have. And uh, that's the idea behind the shakedown. And that's why we're also playing Ice Shard because Ice Shard can also do this much easier. You know, we pay more mana for it and it's fast speed, but it still uh, does allow us to do that. I was thinking about running two copies of Ice Shard because this card has been overall more consistent, but the problem is it kills a lot of my own stuff, right? And a lot of times damaging my own shit is not great. So I like having a one off of each. It gives me more flexibility and it allows me to adapt better to certain scenarios. And because of the importance of warning shot and because we're playing these sorts of cards, having a full set of Zap spray fin helps us a lot because Zap spray fin allows us to also go for the plunder because of the elusive, uh, making him hard to block and getting us warning shot or a bad warning shot or potentially a card like spoils of war this is also another reason why i built this deck i wanted to try and see if i could fit this new card in a deck and this is a really powerful uh grant effect plus two plus four is arguably much better than plus three plus three the plus four health is a really big deal it makes units very very hard to kill and uh, makes them super resilient in general and because of all of our different ways of enabling plunder it's very easy for us to trigger this i wouldn't recommend running a full set though because it is definitely limited as a combat trick since you have to deal damage prior even though in a pinch you can just go for the plus one plus two but that's not really great, right? So we, we want to go for the full value. There's a big difference between you know, option number one and option number two. So yeah. We also have a one-off of Babbling Burke. Babbling Burke can allow us to draw one of our champions. Gives us a little bit of extra card draw, which sometimes we may very well need. As the late game is comprised of, like I said, the Dreadway and the Tusk Raider. Depending on what we need in the moment, we can go for Tusk Raider to fish off a super thick Sejuani. Or we can go for the Dreadway to try to go for the immediate kill. And uh, both of these are very, very strong plays that we could potentially ran into with Wolf Rider. And that's the general consensus of the deck. The deck does really well in the meta. You know, it's not tier one, but it definitely can bring the fight to pretty much anything. Like, I feel like I can beat any deck potentially with this deck, uh, though I can also lose. <laughs> so yeah, keep that in mind. So it's, it's very important in that regard. And I'm getting, I'm getting a call here, so... Uh, yeah, that's basically where I'll end, I think, though. Uh, regarding mulligans, it's very important for you to find a one-drop. And if you draw into a warning shot in your opening hand, keep it. This card is worth gold. But also, I'm not saying don't use it because you're going to see me using it a lot in the game. But that's one of the ultimate like skill aspects of this deck. You have to decide whether to keep warning shot or resort to it. A lot of times, you can't really help yourself if you have a wolf rider and you have warning shot in hand. You go for it because ramping is important. But... Warning Shot is worth so much when you manage to level up Sejuani because it, it really, like having that burst speed just frostbite the entire opposing board is absolutely insane. And it's really important, uh, you know, to have that uh, accessible. So if you can find a way to level up your champions without having to waste your Warning Shots, that could mean the difference between winning or losing. And I think today's gameplay will uh, be quite a testament to that. So I'm going to stop right there. I uh, hope you guys, you know, Learned everything you need to learn in that sense. I'm trying to incorporate mulligan tips and everything. But of course, it also varies a lot within the matchup. If you keep stuff, like if you have Wolf Rider, you also keep that as well. Um, Zap's Prayfin is generally a keep the most time too. And of course, cards like Monkey, Idol, are. You know, Ice Shard and Shakedown, no. You want to mulligan those away. They're, they're bad warning shots, so you keep that in mind. And it's also nice that Zap's Prayfin can fish off uh, Three Sisters, which can be a very flexible card. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So have a solid day. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. I hope you guys enjoy today's gameplay. I think it's pretty fire. I don't know, maybe a little bit biased. And yeah, have a good one. Enjoy the games. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Let's engage in some violence. We're gonna keep the warning shot. This is a good card to have in general. Like it's actually a very, very vital card in the deck. We wish we could carry more. I, I probably would have explained in the deck tech like why I'm running some like a one off of two very weird cards. Because they're bad warning shots. We're gonna mulligan everything else. And hopefully find uh, a bit of an early curve. Alright. But the thing is here. Here. I wanna use it for the uh, Jack Butcher because it's gonna sell I also have Jet Zap Spray from, right? This allows me to progress my level up by two stages. Hmm, if you play Soraka, this sucks. Because we don't have any three mana play. Oh, man. Ha! 
<laughs> we played some mind games. Oh. We try to to ice shard here. Because this it forces him to. Yeah. It allows me to to wolf rider. We're playing some mind games on him, which is really nice. We actually managed to trade favorably into that. Smell that barg. Beer. Star Spring is inside, but we got the dreadway. Master the power of the stars. Master your healing. I'm trying, but they keep wandering off. I will find the goodness in you, River King. Hope only provides temporary sustenance, child. Do I play Zap Sprayfin or do I play Babblingberg? Babblingberg can allow me to to find Sejuani or Gangplank. No, I'm gonna play Zap. Keep up, keep up. Yeah, finding three sisters is important. Play one of these two. Like a fish in water. <laughs> Excuse my impertinence. Could trigger this to think about spoils of war. I'm gonna pass. The possibilities are infinite. Live with purpose. We look after our own. Where there's a will, there's a meal. I'm gonna play Sijuani. Or I'm gonna fish for Sijuani rather. Take heart. Live with purpose. It's too late now. Because this Tusk Raider also allows me to trade into Soraka. The problem with, with uh, Dreadway is that it triggers that, right? Oh my god. Does this this was strike that for like double, right? What's what's the best um Yeah, this is the best. The winter's claw endures. You own what you take. Could have a bastion. He could have a bastion. He could have a bastion, but that's pretty much it, right? 
If he has a bastion, what is it more likely? He has a bastion or he has a, bu a hush? Bring me chaos. I have to play around one of the two. I don't know which one though. He could have other stuff like to heal him. I, I have to play. I have. It's not just. It's just not like hush that I'm playing around. This is literally only bastion. It's literally only bastion. Four cards in hand. Yes. Yes! Beautiful! Beautiful! And there's your boy. So, uh, Mibs, how long? How long? Hmm? How many to please, Rick? Don't worry about such things. Paint their decks with blood! I've been propagating quite the appetite. <laughs> I see feast in your future. Listen and learn. Yeah, this deals double damage, buddy. Live with purpose. Let us peruse this establishment's fair. Stand and fight! What brings you here? Take heart. Live with purpose. Another nibble. That's two hushes, man. You 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 don't have all the hushes in the world. You need the, you need so many hushes. Take heart. Live with purpose. Leave no survivors. Waters will run red. Is mine. And mine alone! Don't find the guiding touch! Duh! Yes! Got him, baby! Oh, that felt good! We survived! Whew! Barely. <laughs> Easy Draven. Alright. Um, I like the idea of leading off with the Jack Butcher. I'm gonna drop this, this, and the Prowling Cutthroat for now as well. Because Thermogen and Beam can be a thing here. So it is more likely that uh, we get the plunder with with this one drop here. This may seem weird, but I really want to enable the Wolf Rider. 
and I prevent an axe generation. Smell that barg. Fear. I, I allow him to, to clean up my board easier, but at the same time, the problem with this uh, Sejuani is that he can just thermo beam it. Yeah, I don't like the fact that I played to thermo beam. So I'm gonna do this. I could have used the shakedown to to deny the uh, the mystic shot. I need to wait until I go under. Because now what I can do. He managed to shut us down. Like we, we, um, yeah. He kills us with a decimate. Good game. Good game. Well played. Well played. Can't win them all. Not even with violence. Reggaeton, bye. All right. We're gonna drop anything that's not low curve because we do want to find. Not only are we happy we're seeing our one drop, but we also want to draw into Monkey Idol, right? Nothing Stuff like that. Got more damage this way. Even though we did trade with uh, with that set of time for searcher, okay. This morning shot. Here, you can block here, and I only get two more damage. Three damage, two damage. I don't like that. I can do better.
I can play Babbling Burke here. If he doesn't, like, he, need, he needs to play more cards to open attack with Vi. Oh, but he could just do that. The fact that he drew by like so early on with his Xenotype Researcher is a little bit annoying. Eyes up here, or I'll cut him out. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like that's that's kind of bullshit. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? All right. I am reborn of salt and dry. Let's hope he doesn't have another siphon strike. As I live, all will die. Off with ye. <laughs> Excuse us. Come on. If he's happy with this, I'm happy as well. Because there's no health gain. See, we got a warning shot. A shakedown. Shakedown's pretty good. This guy just. Always rely on you to keep us safe. This guy just draws all of his, his buffed cards. <laughs> um, I think Sejuani is best here. Fight for your lives. Bow to no one. I wonder if I should be playing um Stuck on that, all right. <laughs> I even forgot, I guess. Hey, I mean. <laughs> I could have played Shakedown, but. Should have thought it through. Stop coming for those who wronged me. <laughs> LeBlanc Draven. Battle of the Quick Attackers. Spoils of War can actually be pretty neat here. I like the turn one uh, prowling cutthroat. I don't think this region. Unless he's playing like Blade. Lucky you. I'm the last thing you'll see. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 
Maybe keeping the the, the spoils of war was a mistake. I mean, I can apply it now, right? You won't feel it first. Time for the main event. There's plenty of killing left. A 3-5 or just make this massive? This becomes a 5-7. A That's like really fucking thick. That's really thick. That's a big boy. Watch and learn. Whirling Death still overcomes it, so I'm not gonna block. Yeah, if I block with this and he whirling deaths, that's a problem. So I'm gonna take the hit. We feast tonight, Varg. We're gonna use warning shot to enable the wolf rider so we can ramp into Sidwani. death and use that here which is a problem so I'm not gonna let him go for the whirling death I'm gonna preserve this and this I'm gonna attack like this oh you gotta be kidding me Are you certain? well I wasn't expecting that okay you suck. so he doesn't have whirling death that's good to know that's good information. That's a good draw as well. Oh, he's going all in. <laughs> I mean, I already went for it. But I'm a little bit worried because he has all these axes, but at the same time, he needs like some crazy buffs. hard think about that last game uh, I don't know man I don't think I, I don't think I could I'd expect that I mean I if I go for the entomb and he has a deny you know he's playing Ionia so if he has a deny then, then the same thing happens right it's just it's kind of like a it's more likely that they have a deny than they have like double elixir's wrath after this Jesus <laughs> maybe I should have got for it I'm pretty sure he didn't have a deny I cry every time. Uh, we're gonna drop these two. We got so cheesed, oh my lord. Um, I don't like Prowling Cutthroat here, honestly. Because of Go Hard. But I am worried about, you know, not... Not finding a one drop, or a two drop here. Yeah. Well, at least I don't give him a Go Hard. I know what lurks in the shadow. Yeah, we may be off to a bit of a slow start, but Monkey Idol can help us get back there. Oh, you're 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 late. Oh, not really. He had a two drop. I could play Monkey Business. One, two, because it really accelerates the process. We really want that level up. We really, really want that level up. Keep up, keep up. All right, we got the warning shot. Yeah. It will all 
all be over soon. I'm surprised by that look. I guess it makes sense. Gotta go with the flow. So he does halt our progress there. We can use it as a blocker though. I'm ready, little lamb. Neither the flames nor the deaths can claim me. You fled us once. It won't happen again. Through the coral. I mean, we know what we're gonna do. Suffer long. This is gonna be tagged, so we block like this. Even if he has a twist of fate, he can't stop these two attackers from thinking now Kindred. Could have a vengeance. Their bones are splinter. What, what would I ra what, what would I him rather vengeance? The gangplank, right? Yeah. Spoils of war. It's fast now. It knows. No. I never I could be playing through a black spear, but I don't think I don't think they played in Go Hard. Again, I wanna be very, very like I don't wanna waste my warning shot. I ultimately have to. I am reborn of salt and pride. Are my corpses of a mortal? Zerling played two go hards. Unless he has a ruination. We're gonna smack him hard. And I would assume that if he had a ruination, he would have played it by now. I'm going in. I'm not I'm not taking any chances. I'm killing him this turn. I am killing him this turn. <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better. We survive. Redemption. Let's see how we do against Ash. We 
I keep the prowling cutthroat. Um, Monkey Idol is a bit of a liability potentially, but because it can die to to calling strike. But you know, we're just gonna have to try to power through them. Hey there. Don't mind the knife. We drew our two, our two bad warning shots. I've been liking Ice Shard more than Shakedown, though. Even though Shakedown, he wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Look what I found. Okay. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. right, we got all the warning shots here. Faster than my arrow? I think not. That's a lot of damage. Time to make an appearance. Time to make an appearance. A lot of damage. Smoke and mirrors. I'll cut them apart. You're mine. Crows will have what's left. This ice shard may actually, or not. This is huge. Pain is nothing. Because these two warning shots. Oh my god, these two warning shots. Oh my god, this is is, is life saving. These warnings. My, my hand was feeling light until I drew the Sejuani. Now we got the shakedown with the monkey idol. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this, baby. The ocean of summer, hear us! And take our germs! 
Oh, it's so epic. Oh, come at me, bro. Come at me. Come at me. Okay, so this just guarantees lethal. Because I have the fearsome here. Because they can't block the, the, the dreadway. Hey, we got him, baby! Oh, that was so hot! Oh! Oh, oh! Oh, God, that was so good.